Good morning, students. Today I am going to discuss a topic of acclimatization. So, what do you mean by acclimatization? Acclimatization means whenever we are climbing to a high altitude or we are going to a mountain like that, how your body responds to that? At sea level, what is the barometric pressure? 760. Barometric pressure is 760 millimeter mercury. At high altitude, so at high altitude, what will happen to the barometric pressure? Decreased. So decreased barometric pressure. So obviously, when the total barometric pressure is decreased, partial pressure of oxygen is obviously going to be decreased because oxygen is 20 percentage. Partial pressure of oxygen is 20 percentage of barometric pressure. So when I am going to high altitude, there is decreased partial pressure of oxygen. Why there is decreased partial pressure of oxygen? Because total barometric pressure itself is decreased. And this is called hypoxemic hypoxia hypoxia decreased oxygen level why hypoxemic hypoxia because the partial pressure of oxygen itself is decreased now acclimatization is the term used to compensate this so at high altitude there is going to be hypoxia so what my body does to compensate this hypoxia my body undergoes certain changes to overcome this hypoxia that is called acclimatization my body is getting acclimatized to it so that only we are going to discuss in detail today what are the changes that takes place. To understand what are the changes, I will just draw the diagram of transport of oxygen. So this is alveoli and this is pulmonary capillary, this is artery, so this is tissue, so this is tissue capillary, so this will be cell lobe. From the alveoli, the oxygen enters into the pulmonary capillary where the gaseous excess takes place. It goes into the arterial blood with hemoglobin, so hemoglobin will be carrying the oxygen then the oxygen is taken up by the tissues alveolar level what is going to happen as we are going at high altitude there is hypoxia we already discussed so what will happen to compensate that there is increased ventilation so alveolar ventilation is increased point number one point number two there is increase in diffusing capacity or diffusion at the blood arterial blood level there is increase in RBC production or polycythemia. At the alveolar level, there is increase in ventilation. Alveolar ventilation is increased. That diffusion, alveoli, the oxygen diffusing from alveolar to the pulmonary capillary. That is diffusion capacity is increased. Point number two. Point number three, there is increased RBC count. Then point, point number four, increased circulation. Increased circulation meaning increased BP, increased cardiac output, increased heart rate. The general blood flow is increased. That is point number four. Point number five at the tissue. What happens? There is angiogenesis. So angio means vessel. Genesis means production. So there is production of new blood vessels. Minute blood vessels are newly developed at the tissue level. That is called angiogenesis. Or increase in tissue vascularity. Because of this angiogenesis, there is increase in tissue vascularity. Then at cellular level, cell, there is increased utilization. So even though there is hypoxia, in high altitude, even though there is hypoxia, because of this acclimatization, what happens? The cells increase utilization. So whatever oxygen is available, almost all the oxygen is going to be utilized. There is increase in cellular utilization. This is also called as cellular acclimatization so six points i can repeat from the alveoli to the cell level so it is very very simple so that's reason acclimatization six points increase in ventilation increase in diffusing capacity increase rbc production which is polycythemia increased circulatory system like increased blood pressure increased blood flow tissue vascularity is increased like angiogenesis formation of new blood vessels at cellular level, there is increase in utilization of oxygen by the cells. Increased utilization, which is cellular acclimatization. Now, I am going to explain all these six points with the mechanisms. Why it is happening? So that it will be still better. So the first one is increased ventilation. Very simple. What happens in high altitude? Hypoxia. So what hypoxia will do? It stimulates peripheral chemoreceptors which are carotid body 
and aortic body. What peripheral chemoreceptors does? It will stimulate respiratory center. So when respiratory center is stimulated, there will be hyperventilation for oxygen intake. So hyperventilation occurs, that is increased ventilation. So point number one, I am explaining. So there is a problem in this. Yeah, oxygen intake is there, but because of this hyperventilation, there is carbon dioxide wash out. Note it down, very very important. So what happens, hypoxia stimulates oxygen intake. Okay, good. I want more oxygen because I am already suffering from hypoxia. But hypoxia tries to compensate by peripheral chemoreceptors. But when I hyperventilate, what happens? When I hyperventilate, carbon dioxide is gone out. More carbon dioxide is gone. So that is called a carbon dioxide washout. So now what happens? This inhibits respiratory center because carbon dioxide is a potent stimulus. Carbon dioxide and H plus is potent stimulus for respiration. When carbon dioxide is washed out, this inhibits respiratory. See here. This is getting cancelled. Hypoxia is stimulating respiratory center, but carbon dioxide washed out is inhibiting the respiratory center. And this carbon dioxide washed out is called respiratory alkalosis. So at high altitude, there is a phenomenon called respiratory alkalosis. So respiratory alkalosis occurs. Why respiratory alkalosis? Why alkalosis? Carbon dioxide is washed out. So a type, a form of acidic form is getting washed out. Carbon dioxide is the one which will be converted to H plus. Hydrogen ion. Since the carbon dioxide is washed out, it results in alkalosis. Acidity is decreased. And since this is respiratory, we call that as respiratory alkalosis. So because of this respiratory alkalosis, what happens? The respiratory center is inhibited. No stimulus. Carbon dioxide stimulus, the powerful stimulus is gone. Now, your respiratory center is very sad. <coughs> so respiratory center is very very sad. Why? No carbon dioxide. If carbon dioxide is there, it will be stimulated. But carbon dioxide is washed out because of hyperventilation. Maybe you have done too much. So, so now what happens? Kidney comes to play. So listen here. To compensate this respiratory alkalosis, that is, respiratory center is inhibited. But I want the respiration to be stimulated because I am an high altitude. I want this acclimatization, the adaptive changes. So what happens? Kidney. So what this kidney does is increases bicarbonate excretion. Note it down. Increased bicarbonate excretion retains H plus. So the kidney at high altitude, what happens? It will excrete the bicarbonate. So the alkalosis, the alkali, bicarbonate is alkali, that is excreted, and H plus acidic is retained. So this is compensating. So compens. Respiratory center is stimulated. So note it out. This is point number one. If you want more details, one day ascent. So from I am going to high altitude. So that is increased ventilation. When I am going to high altitude, at one day what happens? Ventilation is increased 1.65 times. First day. So first day of ascent, my ventilation is increased 1.65 times. Three to four days. So I am climbing three to four days. So after three to four days of climbing from the sea level, it is increased to almost four to five times. Ventilation and play. Now coming to second. As I mentioned, increased diffusing capacity. So increased diffusing capacity. Or more oxygen is getting diffused from the alveoli into the capillary. Obviously, there is increased surface area. One reason. Another reason noted down. Hypoxia always causes bronchoconstriction. Or I will make it simple. Hypoxia causes vasodilation in all blood vessels. Hypoxia causes vasodilation everywhere except pulmonary blood vessel. Pulmonary that is vasoconstriction. So hypoxia causes pulmonary vasoconstriction, but 
vasodilation in all other blood vessels. Very very important. Because of this pulmonary vasoconstriction, what happens? There is increased pulmonary blood flow. Reason for increased diffusion capacity. And another reason because of pulmonary vasoconstriction, yeah, pulmonary vasoconstriction, there is opening up of closed spaces. Now coming to the third point, increased RBC production, which is poly Cytemia. You can see here in the arterial blood, the RBC production is increased. Once the RBC is increased, hemoglobin is increased because hemoglobin is a pigment present within the RBC. So, oxygen carrying capacity is obviously increased. That is what needed in hypoxia. But now we will see why RBC production is increased. Hypoxia, hypoxia inducible factor. This is erythropoietin from kidney. See here, kidney helps everywhere. In that, carbon dioxide wash out. That is being handled by kidney. Here, hypoxia causes increased erythropoietin and obviously erythropoietin, erythropoiesis, so increased RBC production. Polycythemia reason is hypoxia increases erythropoietin production from the kidney. Then going to the fourth point, increased circulation. It's simple. In hypoxia, what happens? There is increased sympathetic activity. Note it down. There is increased blood pressure. Increased cardiac output, increased heart rate. So simple. Sympathetic activity is increased. Cardiac output. So cardiac output is increased 30 percentage of normal. Then fifth point at tissue level, increased tissue vascularity. The reason is hypoxia increases vascular epidermal growth factor. Vascular means blood vessel, growth means growing. So vascular epidermal growth factor. So what happens? Because of this, there is angiogenesis or increased blood vessel formation, my, micro blood vessels. This is because of vascular epidermal growth factor is increased, hypoxia. So this is at the tissue level. Now coming to final at cellular level also. So cellular level, what are the place? We call it as cellular acclimatization. What happens in cellular acclimatization? Increased utilization, note it down. There is increased utilization of oxygen by cells. Inspect of less oxygen available, that is hypoxia. So, inspect of less oxygen available, the utilization, whatever oxygen is available, almost everything, the utilization of oxygen is very, very high in acclimatization so at cell level. That is called cellular acclimatization. The reason is increase in number of mitochondria, increase in mitochondrial enzymes. So all these causes increased utilization of oxygen. So all these six things takes place in acclimatization. I explained about each and everything. Again to summarize, we can see here increased ventilation, increased diffusion capacity, polycythemia, increased RBC production, increased circulatory system like increased cardiac output, increased blood pressure. At tissue level, angiogenesis, formation of new blood vessels. At cellular level, Increased utilization of oxygen by the cells, which is called cellular acclimatization. And we explained the basis behind each and everything. Now you imagine the people, this is for as you ascend from the sea level, for example, when I am going to climb above and above, ascend 10,000 feet, 15,000 feet, all these six stages is going to take place in me. Now imagine the people staying there itself, 15,000 feet itself, the natives. That is what I am telling is, I am asking about natural acclimatization so natural acclimatization those who are staying there itself they are already accomplished so what will happen the same thing you can see here from the six points you can tell so for natural acclimatization there will be so increased ventilation increased diffusion so there is increased ventilation increased diffusion so what will happen there while well, both itself they are going to be born in high altitudes so their body is already going to get adapted from the birth itself. So they will have barrel shaped chest or broad chest. This is natural acclimatization. What we discussed is as you go and I enter what changes happens. This is naturally present barrel shaped chest. Then obviously polycythemia. So they will be having more RBC count normally. Then cardiomegaly also can be there because of increased sympathetic activity. So cardiomegaly, increased cardiac output. So more pumping of heart is needed so cardiomegaly can be there for them these are for natural 
inhabitants at high altitude then angiogenesis will be there and increased mitochondria both number as well as enzymes so all these will be naturally present in people who stay there and that term is called as natural acclimatization so in today's video we discussed about how your body adapts as you go to high altitude in next video we can discuss about mountain sickness thank you for watching this video so please subscribe to my channel dr sen physiology and share with your friends so that it will be useful for them thank you we'll meet in next class